Uh, it's my pleasure now to introduce Michael Irwin from Cubic PV. Michael is actually has multiple uh, duties at Cubic PV. He's founder, uh, senior vice president, and CTO. And today he will tell us about their technology and how they improve stability and efficiency for large area cells. Michael, over to you. Thank you, sir. Um, so thank you all for, for attending today. I appreciate your time. Um, my name is Michael Irwin. I'm Chief Technology Officer, as mentioned, at, um, at Cubic PV. Um, talk about today the towards a perovskite tandem future. I don't think the title's lined up perfectly, but that's okay. So uh, the main thing is that we founded a company called Hunt Perovskite Technologies once upon a time to focus on perovskites within an incubator at Hunt Oil. And then this year, in 2021, we merged with 1366 Technologies, which is a curveless silicon tech. The idea being that we could combine our two technologies, having a high performance perovskite top cell with a low cost curveless back cell. So curveless is important for the back cell. If, if this, the back cell is only doing a fraction of the work that would normally do in a single junction, um, it needs to cost also a fraction of what the single junction would as well. And so being curveless has the benefit of overall, you know, monetary cost, but also embedded carbon and an embedded energy. Um, so far, the company has about 250 million invested in us. Um, primarily, that is on the silicon side, including a demonstration plant uh, in Malaysia a couple of years ago. Um, but post-merger, our top three shareholders, Breakthrough Energy Ventures, which many of you may know, um, we're, we're so happy to be partnered with them. They're, they're a great um uh, a great partner for us, along with First Solar, um, you know, really the only major commercial thin film manufacturer in the world. And then Hunt Energy Enterprises, that is the incubator slash venture group of Hunt Oil or Hunt Energy, from which we founded Hunt Perovskite Technologies uh, pre-merger. Now, the motivation here behind all this uh, in terms of cost and, and waste is the Zakralski method or the CZ method is quite, quite wasteful, right? So you've got to go from uh, polysilicon. So polysilicon starting material all the way through this entire supply chain to get to a PV module. What if we could cut out the ingot part and go straight to the wafer? That's kind of what's important. And so looking at the Zakralski process, you have to melt silicon at high temperature, pull the single crystal ingot, you cut off its ends, you cut off its ends, you cut off its sides, you glue it to a piece of glass, and then you chop it up into individual wafers. So all this waste associated results in about 43% of the silicon goes to scrap. Now the silicon does, the, all the waste does go back here, it is recycled, but that energy, the 43% energy and carbon, embedded carbon content that went into making this uh, is gone. So that results in increased cost and less clean than we'd like our PV to be. Ideally, this is not just renewable energy, this is also clean technology, and we need to clean up PV's act. So just one slide briefly on um, the back cell, kind of the same idea here. You have the entire supply chain, but if I can cut out the ingot, I cut out a step, I dramatically reduce the cost, creating an ideal back cell for a tandem product. Now on to tandems. <clears throat> There's two basic tandem architectures we'll discuss today. Um, there are more, but the two basic ones are a two terminal tandem as indicated here, and then a four terminal tandem as indicated here. The primary difference is in a two terminal tandem, um, the, the top cell is deposited directly onto the back cell um, via a recombination layer. So it's monolithic, they're bound together. The second design for terminal is you have two independent cells. So you can see electrode to electrode, the top cell, you have your laminate in between, and then your back cell. So you have two, uh, two independent cells in this four terminal design, and four terminal means there's four leads coming out that you can then connect however you want to. You can connect them in series, you can connect them in parallel, you can connect them through uh, you know, four terminal power electronics to kind of maximize the efficiency. And so we have to discern which ones we're gonna work on, two terminal or four terminal. So in a two terminal design, if you look, if we can constrain ourselves to a silicon back cell, you have a band gap versus band gap plot here. So top cell, um, top cell, bottom cell, band gap. We can train our, constrain ourselves to silicon back cell at 1.1 EV. So what you look here on the left um, axis, the vertical 